And if at times our efforts and works seem to fail and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. The time of ancient Israel, there was always this war of gods. There, there was always... Baal. You had, ba you had God, the true God, and then you had Baal. That's right. And Baal was the substitute God. Baal was, we were just talking about, yeah. he was God of prosperity and all the, And on the high places of Israel, you had Baal. You had the Baal worship, the Baal altars, and all, the, all those things going on. Later on, you have another war of gods. You have, in the time of the Maccabees, the Hanukkah, you have Antiochus, this horrible king, who comes into Israel, and he sets an altar, he sets an abomination on the Temple Mount. This is where we get the abomination desolation. This is, this is the foreshadow. This is first called the abomination desolation. And then Jesus, Messiah, refers to it when he talks about what will happen. So in a sense, this is a shadow of what's going to happen later. You know, the whole Hanukkah picture. So you have Antiochus, he defiles the Temple Mount, he desecrates God's sanctuary, he slaughters a pig, and then he sets up this abomination, which is a shadow of what's coming. What was the abomination? Well, we know the abomination, it was an idol, and it was an idol of the god Zeus, okay? The idol of the god Zeus, the chief of the, of the Greek gods. And he, he set it up, we just talked about the altar being restored. He set it up on the altar. The Maccabees, finally they win, they get back the temple, they cleanse the temple, they take away the idol, they cleanse it all, hmm. but there's something deeper going on in this war. Okay. And this goes to the end times, ultimately. But for you have the god Baal, that was what we mentioned. Baal in Babylonian becomes Bel. Bel becomes Belos. Belos is linked to Zeus. It's, in other words, these are just like masks of the same principality. Now something else happens. When the Maccabees win that war and they take down that altar of Zeus and they cleanse the temple, it's almost like Satan comes back. And what? It, what and the same time when they take that 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 abomination off the temple, he causes another altar of Zeus to go up in the ancient world. This, it's what was on the Temple Mount, but now it's a mag gigantic altar of Zeus. And where was it? It was in the, it was in the, the place called Pergamon. 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 A gigantic altar of Zeus on Pergamon. Now, when you read the book of Revelation, and it, re you spe and it speaks about Pergamon, and when it, you read in, in Revelation, it says Pergamon, the place of the throne of Satan. Oh. When it talks about the throne of Satan, it's Pergamon. Why? Because in Pergamon, you have this gigantic pagan altar, the altar of Zeus, which is, the, is part of this war going on, continuously going on. Now, here's the thing. You have, you have, this, you have this war. What happened, what happened to that altar? What happened to the throne of Satan? 
This was there. You know, the, the Greeks were in charge of it first, and they were the ones at that time that were persecuting Israel in the days of Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. Then the Romans took over, and then they destroyed the temple. They come against the Jewish people. They come against the gospel, the throne of Satan. But what happens is then the gospel starts spreading to the Roman Empire. And people start turning away from the gods and the altar. So the altar of Zeus or of Pergamon, the altar of Pergamon or the throne of Satan starts falling into disrepair. It starts kind of becoming underground. It will stay that way dormant until the modern age, until our time. As, the, as, as we watch, as the world, as Europe, and, what, and they start throwing off the gospel, becomes they start, you know, in Europe especially, what happens is a man comes to Pergamon in the, at the end of the 19th century, and, he, and he, he starts uncovering the altar or the throne of Satan. 